When we discuss the temple hierarchy in ancient Egypt, like the administrative hierarchy, we tend to focus on the men. But if we consider the woman in this family sculpture, we can look at the inscription at her feet and see that she was a priestess of the goddesses Hathor and Neith. The goddess Hathor had many women serving in her temples. The title in ancient Egyptian that we translate priestess is Hemet Necha. It literally means servant of the god. We even know of female high priestesses during the Old Kingdom, serving the cults of the goddesses Hathor, Neith and Pachet, as well as the god Thoth. Women were also important in the temples as singers or musicians. The word in ancient Egyptian is Shemayet. Anhai here was Chantress of Amun, leader of the musicians of Osiris and leader of the musicians of Nebtu and Khnum, an important woman indeed. She is shown rattling a sistrum. The sistrum is a ceremonial rattle with crossbars that either rattled backwards and forwards or had small discs on them that could indeed be rattled. Many of the sistra to survive from ancient Egypt are quite fabulous. An example here in Faience, a ceremonial sistrum emblazoned with the head of the goddess Hathor. We might imagine that the young woman at the legs of her husband, Senefa, was his daughter. But in fact, this is his wife, Merit. She was far more important than that last image, Let's On. She is shown here, a Shemayet, a Chantress of Amun, holding in her left hand a sistrum, in her right hand holding a collar with a counterpoise. She would have rattled this too in the rituals before the god. The most eminent religious title held by a woman was God's wife of Amun in ancient Egyptian Hemet Necha en Amun. It was also a position of great political significance, endowed with a huge estate, a treasury and a sizable staff. The ownership of land would have made the office economically powerful. The first royal woman to hold the title God's wife is this one, Ahmos Nefertari. Hatshepsut became a great female pharaoh, but she was also God's wife of Amun, this religious and powerful title. On the walls of one of her chapels, we see scenes of the god's wife of Amun performing rituals alongside a male priest. The god's wife on the right. Facing the priest, each holding a firebrand. Below, they face each other again, this time holding fans, each with an image of a bound captive on it. They might go on to burn the fans in a brazier lit with the firebrands, but this part of the relief is unfortunately damaged. If they do, this would have been an execration ritual. By the late period, the god's wife of Amun was a title held by an unmarried daughter of the ruler in order to ensure royal control of the Theban area in the south of Egypt. She controlled the vast estate of the god Amun, employed huge numbers of people and had access to great wealth. This is Hawa, steward to the god's wife Amenirdis. He holds representations of Isis and Hathor, but it is the name of his boss, Amenirdis, that is inscribed between the two goddesses. The god's wife, Anknez Nef Ibre, is depicted the same size as a god, wearing the same headdress as him. Like her father, the pharaoh, she had two names written in cartouches. And when she died, the god's wife was worshipped alongside other deities, here at the shrines of the god's wives at Medina Habu. <laughs>